All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to another great episode on your favorite political talk show, The Truth with Ben Jokes. Now, accountability is one ingredient that must never be missing in a democracy. When, as an administration, very important decisions are taken in secret, then credibility is out of the window. In the national budget for 2024, there was no provision for fuel subsidy. This is because on May 29, 2023, Tinubu made a pronouncement that subsidy was gone. And we knew it was hasty and poorly thought out. He was warned, but he refused to listen. And shortly after the removal of the subsidy, the economy of Nigeria turned upside down. And we began to hear rumors after two months of the removal that this administration had secretly began paying subsidy. But the Tinubu-led administration vehemently denied that allegation because Nigerians began to ask two questions. Number one, they said, how can we be buying petrol at between 615 Naira to 700 Naira per litre and the government is still subsidizing? Secondly, Nigeria said, how do we properly monitor the subsidy regime? How do we properly monitor the payment of subsidy if it is being done secretly? But the Tinubu-led administration came out and denied it once again. But in an interview hours ago, Tinubu's special advisor on energy was kind of pushed to the wall and she began making confessions as regards the secret fuel subsidy payment. And this got Nigerians talking because there is a lot of fraud to be unraveled here. Before I show you what she said and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this update. Now, Remy Tinubu in her speech following the abduction of school pupils in Kaduna urged governors and lawmakers to rise up and Nigerians hit back at her saying, Madam, your husband is the chief security officer of Nigeria. Channel your energy to the appropriate quarters. Look at how the papers reported it. Kidnapping. Enough is enough. Lawmakers, governors should do something, says Remy Tinubu. Remy Tinubu has condemned the wave of kidnappings in the country, calling for the death penalty for any apprehended kidnappers. Mrs. Tinubu made this call on Friday while speaking with journalists a day after armed bandits abducted over 250 school children in Kaduna State. Whoever is kidnapping young people is sick, cruel, and cowardly. Enough is enough, Mrs. Tinubu said. I call on state governors that once we take hold of them, it is a capital punishment. They are animals. They are evil and then we should take them out of our midst. The state governors and the lawmakers should do something, Mrs. Tinubu stressed. Mrs. Tinubu, a former senator, asked, why don't they take people their sides? Why are they torturing our children? What they are doing is trying to kill our future. Why would you go and take them from their schools? As a former lawmaker, I believe that any of them captured that a capital punishment should be given, she said. On Thursday, Armed bandits raided a school in Kuriga town, Chikun local government in Kaduna, kidnapping over 250 students. This came a few days after Boko Haram insurgents raided an IDP camp in Gambaru, Ngala, Borno State, and abducted more than 100 individuals. Now, that was Remy Tinubu there, urging state governors to get up and apprehend the kidnappers and lawmakers to implement death penalty after they are apprehended but look at how nigerians reacted look at some of the tweet reactions this tweet here says i hear you madam but tinubu should just be awake at night like which doing nothing because ajurian gulali says he doesn't sleep but now it is governors and lawmakers that have to do the work and this tweet here says what will your husband the president be doing gallivanting the box stops at his table he should secure the country simple because that is the primary assignment of a government to secure the people's lives and their properties and this tweet here says lawmakers and governors should do something while commander-in-chief keeps sleeping confused government mm. and this tweet here says enough is enough without showing any action the previous administration was i assure you today it is enough is enough that is it it's all talk 
and this time around she's even shifting the goalpost oh what a shame Tinubu government reserves rights to pay fuel subsidy to cushion hardship of nigerians presidential aid admits the nigerian government has stated that it reserves the right to pay fuel subsidy intermittently to cushion hardship in the country the special advisor to Tinubu on energy mrs olu vahijan made this known while briefing journalists in abuja on friday while responding to questions about whether the government had returned the fuel subsidy according to the IMF claim. She explained that the government was doing all in its power to maintain the price of fuel to cushion the impact on the citizens, adding that governments across the world intervene at difficult times to address economic hardship by way of subsidy. She said the subsidy was removed on May 29th. However, the government has the prerogative to maintain price stability to address social unrest. They reserve the rights to intervene. If the government feels that it cannot continue to allow prices to fluctuate due to high inflation and exchange rates, the government reserves the right to intervene intermittently, and that does not negate the fact that subsidy has been removed. Former Minister of State for Defense, Musili Obanikoro, had asked Tinubu's administration to be transparent and inform Nigerians if fuel subsidy has been restored or not. During the inaugural speech on May 29, 2023, Tinubu declared an end to the subsidy regime, which immediately pushed up the prices of premium motor spirits, otherwise known as petrol. But there have been recent claims that government has quietly returned subsidy to keep its prices at around 600 naira per liter. The Alliance on Surviving COVID-19 and Beyond had asked Tinubu's administration to review the removal of fuel subsidy in the interest of the people. Human rights lawyer and the chair of ASAP, Femi Falano, in a statement on Sunday had said it will be recalled that after the Muhammad Buhari administration announced that it had removed subsidy on petrol, it turned around to spend 11 trillion on the so-called under recovery within a period of eight years. Mr. Dickerman, who made the disclosure while participating in a panel discussion, disclosed that a significant subsidy is still in place, adding that this has contributed to the affordable price of the products and potentially fueling smuggling activities to neighboring countries. Curiously, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited has not deemed it fit to deny the serious allegation that fuel subsidy has been restored since there is no provision for fuel subsidy in the 2023 and 2024 Appropriation Acts the federal government should, without any further delay, confirm or deny the serious allegation and end the opacity surrounding the importation of fuel from foreign countries. There is no need for any denial. This is the special advisor to Tinubu coming out to talk like this, that the government has the right to pay subsidies. It is their prerogative. It means they are already doing it. And nobody is saying they shouldn't pay. But the fact that it is being done secretly means there is something else they are hiding. And it took Mr. Dickerman, uh, the MD of one of the biggest oil companies in Nigeria to reveal that this administration was still paying 1 trillion naira as subsidy monthly. 1 trillion naira monthly makes it 12 trillion annually. 12 trillion in one year. Meanwhile, the Buhari administration was paying 5.4 trillion naira annually and we're buying fuel at 195 naira per liter. Now we are buying at between 615 to 700 naira and we are paying 1 trillion monthly to make it 12 trillion annually. How do you reconcile that? What kind of fraud is this? And this is why it is being done secretly. Because the monies that are being allocated are inflated. And this is exactly what Peter Obi was talking about. He said the subsidy we are paying, the so-called subsidy we are paying, is too high. 
that if it is properly vetted and they pay the right amount, Nigeria can pay subsidy, buy fuel cheap, and still have enough money for infrastructure. That was what the man kept hammering on. So it is the corruption in the regime that should be removed, not even the subsidy per se, because now they are paying it and they are paying much more than what you know, what much more than what Buhari was even paying. Anyway, that is the APC for you. And I won't quit saying this. Nigerians will never be free with these guys because I don't see any light at the end of this APC tunnel. And what we desire, the great Nigeria that we desire will never come until we come together and we get these guys out of power. But until then, make I still enter town. <laughs> Make I go get some Ogbonge political news. Where will I go like? Why? Because that because of now. Nah, they here. So don't go away. Don't go away.